Jesus Christ. Okay. Oh, sorry. One, One two, two, three. three. Yay! Hi, Sean. Hi, Dave. I'm this is How to Be Friends with Dave and Sean once again, back after our Christmas holiday. How was your Christmas? I didn't get it. I didn't get a unicycle. <laughs> oh. I, I uh, apparently there was one thing on my list that was not going to happen, no matter how much I wanted it. <laughs> I, how yeah. long have you been pitching this unicycle to the missus? Like four months. So it's not as if you didn't illustrate sincerity. No, I, I want to learn how to... This is what I told her. Mastered the tricycle. Okay. Pretty good with the bicycle. Uh-huh. Only one left is the unicycle. That's all I got to do. So Apparently, you... I, I'm a little too accident prone, <laughs> I guess, maybe. But you genuinely believe you could do this. This is like, you could do this, huh? Uh, yeah, I, I watched videos on it. It takes a lot of practice. Don't get me wrong. Sure. But yeah, I was, I was just like, I want to try to ride a unicycle. Okay. So in this world of like the wave riders and all these things that the kids have, uh, I, if you get a unicycle, does that make you a hipster? Oh, I'm pretty sure Portland's proven that a unicycle makes you a hipster. Yeah, that's <laughs> not like it's a totally hipster thing. Um, but it's not something like I'm riding it to work. I just thought it would be something fun to learn how to do. Kind of like juggling. You know, like, yeah, I'm going to learn how to juggle. Um, but I wanted to learn how to ride a unicycle. But once again, I'm kind of accident prone. <laughs> I get hurt a lot, and my wife felt it wasn't a great idea. Uh, okay. Also a good chance she completely forgot. So one of those two. <laughs> Okay, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, we'll circle around to Christmas, hopefully. Let, let's just, yeah. we, we've got news to talk about. Uh, we've got uh, unpopular opinions to talk about that are, we are do. very important. Yes, yes, I'm going to, yes. Uh, we have beverages to partake in. And uh, I want to start off with our latest sponsor, uh, Velcro Flies. You know, the Velcro flies that are on your swimsuits so that they're water resistant. That's right. It's time that they make their way to our everyday pants. Who needs being discreet when you go to the bathroom? Let the sound of your equipment coming out ring throughout the bathroom. I've never had Velcro flies on anything, including swim swimmer. That's a thing. <laughs> That's a thing. That's a At thing. Least at least on swimwear. I, our, our latest sponsor wants them on everything. E even kilts. Don't, yeah, don't, don't trust, don't trust uh, exposing yourself and getting a sexual assault charge to Velcro. Hey, hey, oh. hey. this is a totally legitimate sponsor. Yeah, <laughs> how much are they? Yeah, I'll be the judge of that. And how much, what are they paying for? The point is, Velcro flies. Are they co are they covering the sixteen dollar a month podcast hosting fee? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, oh, lordy, circling back to your accident proneness, well, the stuff falls on the floor apparently. Okay, yeah. you. I want to speak to one of these accident prone stories. So, I don't know how much of of your accident problems are your fault. Um, of course. We have discussed uh, you and I having served in the Army Reserves together, and uh, there are unique things that happen in the Reserves. For example, a Reserve Drill Sergeant unit coming to train modern Army combatives with okay, the so, Reserve yeah, that, Medical yeah, Unit. That was not my fault in any way whatsoever. No, it truly wasn't. But you are... This is what I'm saying. You're more like luck accident prone than anything else. So, so if, if, start us off on the story. What about the dude who rolled my ankle and snapped it? Yeah. Yeah. Way to cut. Spoiler alert. All I'm, all okay. I'm saying is if if you are practicing with your unit so that you can go to the next level of instruction, 
Because yes. where were they trying to get to, like, Mac P3 or something? Something like that, yeah. And you're trying to show proficiency to your supervisor that you know what you're doing, and then you break a soldier? That is a really good way not to get to your class. So, yeah, he locked me up and he broke me. He didn't break me bad, but no. it's already it's already a weak ankle, and I ended up freaking having my ankle wrapped for a week. Um, so the- as he's screaming about metatarsals. It was... Uh, you're killing all of the good punchlines. Okay. Oh, no. This guy was... He was no. freaking out. It was beautiful. Settle down there, Cactus. His career sunk uh. faster in front of him. All he could see was his future dwindle. <laughs> you're killing me. You're killing me. Okay. <laughs> so for those of you who haven't heard this story, the Army has a Modern Army Combatives program based on MMA utilizing a little bit of the best of everything. And yes, drill sergeants would occasionally arrange with command to be like, hey, we want to use your soldiers for instructions, which was always great after being through basic training, seeing a brown round hat coming at you again. Right. Good times. So yes, uh, my good friend Sean is six foot three and very well presented so he was commonly voluntold for things yeah at the time i think i was at my fighting weight when he rolled my ankle i think i was at like 218 yeah yeah so i was actually like in shape and passing pt tests at this point so i was was not i was i was not a pillsbury doughboy i was formidable in combat so yes yeah um (laughs) this drill sergeant utilized sean to illustrate a simple takedown, which he apparently couldn't do it without ruining another human's ankle. And the punchlines are wonderful of these, because yes, as Sean was saying, we got to see a rare moment of vulnerability among drill sergeants as their very careers flashed before their (laughs) eyes. He was so freaked out. And the amazing thing was, I'm laying on my back. I know exactly what's happened. Yes. I'm like, ow, that hurt a lot. And he's, he's freaking. And Cook comes over. Mm-hmm. Cookie comes over. He's like, hey, what's up, man? I was like, yeah, I, I think he locked me up and rolled my ankle. And, and this guy's freaking out. He's like, do you, do you need to take, do you need to check his mart- metatarsals or check his phalanges? And at this point, there's like four medics and me, and we all just look at him and go, can you, can you go away? <laughs> what? <just> like, <laughs> As I recall, one of, in another moment of unique no, vulnerability. his supervisor was like, why don't you just shut up and let the medics do their jobs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was trying to he was trying to sound professional, yeah. and he's like, "You're explaining medicine to medics. Cut it out." Yeah, it was it was pretty good. I mean, like, like the guy didn't get in trouble. It was an accident. It wasn't it a was, big yeah. deal. But I was like, "Cool, an injury at drill. So now I got to go get checked out for this, and I'm going to get out late." Like the worst part of it was, I was going to get home late, and at the time I was driving home to Medford, so it was like four hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a really it was a really crap drive, so I didn't want to get out late. Which, I will be honest, the closest that I had to that was the drive up to Tacoma when I was drilling there. Oh, was yeah. Like, depending on traffic, two, two and a half hour drive. Not a Medford drive by any means. But there was part of me that really did like just getting out of the house at least once a month and just being in a hotel, and that was fine. I was oh, okay yeah. with that. Yeah, I was... I was happy with that. I didn't like, I like staying with you. Gosh, I'm so sorry. I just ate. I, I, I preferred staying with you over lodging in kind, honestly, but mm. yeah, that was, yeah. So, so what do you have to talk about this week? It's been a really rough mental health week for me, so I didn't have a whole lot of notes. No worries. I got notes. But First I was, off, let's start with some news. Okay. Uh, recently, a couple uh, had their dealership pursue their vehicle and purchase it back from them. This is not like you get a le- like a mailer, like you own a Toyota RAV4 and Toyota's selling RAV4s like mad, so they try to get a used RAV4 in and, and resell it. Right. It's, it was not like this. This dealership um, actually went and they uh, pursued this couple's uh, car. I will reveal what car it was in a moment. As reported by Auto Trader. This dealership purchased these people's car back from them because it had 414,000 miles. And we're not talking about 
1968 Volkswagen Beetle that someone just loved to death. This was a 2014 Mitsubishi Mirage. So in the course of six years, these people were putting what? Math off the top of my head in public, around 80,000 miles on this car a year. And all they had to replace on this, besides your normal, it bothers me when I tell people about this and they're like, brakes and stuff. Yeah, okay. Besides the normal stuff, it was only wheel bearings and a starter that went out in all of that time. And this what? is how, sorry, go on. No, it's just a, boy, you what that is. You talk about riding a horse and putting it away wet. That is, that's some hard action for that car for what, six years? Well, it, if it's a 14, it was bought in 13, so seven years. They're about. Yeah. Which I get a kick out of this because Auto Trader and several other uh, Motor Trend, a bunch of these car reviewers, websites, etc., are happy to universally call. And they're not wrong. I want to clarify this. They're happy to universally call the Mitsubishi Mirage the worst car on the road. Uh, I'm here to say, yeah, it's a hunk of crap. It's the best hunk of crap I've ever owned. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if you look at, if you if you combine things like capacity and build quality and road noise and things like that, it's, it is universally considered the worst brand new car you can buy. <laughs> Truly. It is also a car that you can get with a warranty off the lot for like 12K and gets what, right. 40, 45 miles per gallon? Yeah, yeah, peaks yeah. at about 43. It's it, it lives up to essentially what it is supposed to be, which is a very, very affordable car that gets good mileage. It'd be like, uh -huh. well, it, it doesn't ride like a BMW. Yeah, you're right, because it costs one sixth as much. <laughs> so, and, and so to get the background of this family, this family. Okay, so the general rule is, if you're going to put a lot of miles on the car, you want to get something that's fuel efficient. And right. so people jump right to something like a Prius or a hybrid of some kind. And they're blown right past this. This car was specifically built for economy. These guys had a delivery service, so they went and they got the cheapest car that they could get that got really good fuel efficiency. They ended up loving this car so much, they painted it up. It was, it was this weird purple color. Oh, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's an interesting it, flavor, right? But it, it's it rumbles. This car rumbles like mad. It is a three-cylinder engine, so it is naturally unbalanced. So the thing rumbles I, like like a beast, but it's only got one point two liters of displacement. Yeah, I will. I will say from driving uh, the one I drove. Um. I really respected it for what it was. It was mm -hmm. it was great for exactly what it was supposed to be. And if I could go out and buy a new car for commuting, because I do drive 34 miles a day mm -hmm. um, to get to and from work, I would absolutely rep this little guy. Yes. Um, 414,000 miles. I have 270,000 on my car. Yeah, so you only have what? A hundred and thirty four, yeah, a hundred and forty four thousand. That is honestly, that is so hard on a car. It, it is, is, it should have been dead 300,000 miles ago, but especially in a short period of time, yeah, yeah, they've obviously taken really good care of it. So, my wow. plan is, uh, and I recommend this to anyone who, who is looking for a good commuter. Oh, there's my comic book that fell, that's funny. And uh, as soon as the 2021s come out with their new design on it go look at that car because you're going to see a bunch of 2020s on the lot going for like five bucks yeah because right now i'm looking at yeah the a new 2020 mitsubishi mirage es is 15,135, and i could guarantee you you could get it cheaper than that oh yeah and what I, what i love about this is you can get 41 highway it is a manual transmission one thing to be said about that car too it's one of the few new cars you can get that's not specifically meant to be a sports car right that has a manual transmission it is very hard to find that in a car yeah um but what i will say is i think the factory wheels on this are 14 inch and like uh, fif 15s are a dealer option <laughs> uh, correct right they're either 
14s or 30s, which, by the way, I bought two this, new tires for this. This one has 14-inch wheels on it. Thank you. I bought new tires for that thing. You know, you blow one tire, you have to buy two. I got two tires on this thing. They weren't garbage tires. They were actually good tires for 80 bucks. Yeah, because there's not, there are tiny tires. Right. Yeah. Everything on that car saves you money. It's brilliant. I love it. So you can get some car talk on this stuff. Now, something to do, disagree on. All right. Unpopular opinion. Okay. Okay. I don't care who you are. I don't care what's going on in your life. Berettas are sexier than Glocks. I said it. Uh, I wouldn't say that's an unpopular opinion. I'm I, saying it. I I don't think anybody would disagree that a Beretta is one of the most handsome guns ever built. I've owned the 92 FS. I have a Pietro Beretta 70S, mm -hmm. which I still think is a sexy gun. Mm -hmm. Um they're beautifully made. They also have, um, you know, a very, very nice lockup to them. Mm -hmm. They are heavy and they are antiquated. I'm not going to disagree with that point at all. They're beautiful. I'm not yes. I would not carry one on a daily basis because of the weight and the size and everything that comes along with it. Mm -hmm. um, it served great as a service firearm for the military. For a very uh -huh. long time. Yes, it did. It is sexy. Very antiquated piece of technology. Um, and I'm here to tell you that Glocks are the Ugg boots of firearms. Glocks are by far, yeah, that is, that is the pumpkin spice latte of a firearm. That is the firearm that everybody loves. I was just watching something today. They're like, what's the best carry Glock? The 43, the 43X, the 48, the 40. And I'm like, how many of these things do these guys have? They're just pumping them out like hotcakes. Mm -hmm. um, but and obviously, it, obviously they're proven and they do their job. But I will, I will, there has never been a Glock where I said, yeah, that's pretty. No, it's not. It, it lacks that pizzazz. Nothing sexy about it. No. That, and furthermore, can we, uh, just as a, 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 an unpopular opinion again, the military designates everything with letters and numbers. The M16A4, the M1A Abrams, the, you know, the 240 Bravo. All of these things have numbers and letters. And when you're in that military atmosphere, it makes it, I don't know, fit. Can we, like, give firearms a name in the civilian world? Because the other problem with the Glocks is, like you say, they're all numbers. I don't know what the characteristics of the Glock 19 compared compared to the Glock 42 are. It, oh, it's... I I don't either, and I've been looking at these websites where, well, apparently Polymer 80 got raided, so I don't know what's going on with them. But what the heck? Yeah, I guess the ATF went in there said they were, you know, the whole ghost gun thing. They're selling 80% oh, okay. lowers, right? Okay. Which, listen, I don't, I didn't read the story. I'm not even going to cover that. But I've been looking at this. You buy a lower. You'd send it to your house. You drill the holes in it. You install the rails. You put a upper slide on it. You put a barrel on it. Boom, you got yourself a gun. And that's cool. And it is completely legal in the U.S. to build a gun in your own home. Yes. Always has been. Um. But just going to that website and trying to figure out how I would do that was a complete. I I'm not in the Glock, the the Glock and Spiel sphere. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, Gen three is only compatible with Gen four, but the front sights off this one only work with the recoil spring from this one. And I get to a certain point, like I just want to go to a gun store, and just, just, just is it already in the box? Does it work? Okay, cool. I, I don't know. But I've owned Glocks, too, and I hated them. Hated them. Hated I, them. Yeah, I think it was you that told me that they have a strange natural point of aim. The, the point of aim's actually been changed, and you can get them on different Glocks, but the original point of aim that I had, I had either a Gen 2 or a Gen 3, and I want to say it was a, I had a 20 and a 22. Mm -hmm. My natural point of aim was high when I held it because the back strap wasn't the same as, like, a 1911. Sure. So sure. for me, I was trying to... I was trying to use a new gun and break an uh, old habit and it wasn't mm -hmm. worth it to me to do that. Yeah. 
So I think I think they're ugly. I think the Sig P three twenty is ugly. I mean, and I think people are people. Here's here's one of the things that really irks me about things like this is like. Let me just jump in. The Sig P three twenty is the new service firearm for the military. Go on. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. The only one I found that I like is the actual one being issued to the Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers. Uh, hmm. Their issue firearm for their uniform, their dress uniform while serving at the tomb is hot. Um, this is an argument that I always have with people. You can you can spend as much money as you want on a gun, and it could be Generation 5, Generation 6, and you could put a suppressor and big old sights on it and a red dot, but if you're not going to practice with it, it's pointless. So Correct. for the most part, I don't. I, I, I feel that I can get the job done with a $300 gun from a gun shop better than a lot of people could get done with a $2,000 salient arms Glock. Yes, thank you. Not, not to be cocky, but there's a couple of things I'm good at, and that's one of them. There's a lot more than that that you're good at. And I don't want to belabor the point of firearms all day. No, although... this is not the firearms <laughs> podcast. Today although... we're talking 9 versus 357. What gets you hot? Length or terminal ballistics? Yeah, no. Nobody gives a crap. Correct. But to go back to what you were originally saying, the Beretta is beautiful. Yes. It's an absolutely gorgeous gun. And the new... The, the new one, is it the 92A1 or A2 that they came out with? It's the Desert Tan one that was originally in the running to be the military's next gun. I'm going to have to look that up. God, she's pretty. Yeah. She really is. I will say that. Okay, so there is value to talking about this because I have a lot of friends who have recently purchased firearms or are no. thinking about purchasing firearms. Tell 20... me where because there's none here. Well, <laughs> 2020 created a run on everything. Everyone was like, oh, this is the end of the world. I need a firearm. And, and while rational people, I support them them owning it, it, it was a bit of a rush. So, so I, just a, a quick anecdote to help for the fun of it, because our, our stories are kind of fun, and, and to help people who are selecting firearms. Best thing you can do, my dad and I, when he wanted a concealed piece, we got together he uh, took myself, my sister's boyfriend, we went to a gun range that rented firearms. Right. So I, I brought my firearms that I could bring, that he could try. Uh, the boyfriend brought firearms that dad could try, and dad had picked out his own firearm. It was a, a, one of the Smith & Wesson M&P line in 40 cal, yeah. right? Okay. So I... Didn't like that gun at all. I thought it was terrible. Too snappy. Um, right. Uh, my dad, at the time, he was mid-70s, I think. Now he's pushed, he's past 80. I had concern about the recoil on his dang joints, blah, 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 all of that stuff. Tried my Beretta, tried the boyfriend's Glock, tried all of this stuff. He could not be dissuaded from it. So I took my turn on the firearm. This is what I'm talking about selecting firearms. Try everything you can. I took my turn on this firearm. or pick it up. It feels like nothing in my hand. And I got these little baby mittens. So I was uncomfortable with it being so small. I didn't like the trigger action. I racked the slide after putting the magazine in. The, it all feels gross to me. It's terrible. I put the stupid sight at 20 yards away, which is fair for any pistol. I, I pull it up. I fire Black. I'm yeah. Like, mm, point it up again. Fire. Black. I put the stupid thing down. I turned to my dad and I said, buy it. Yeah. See, and that's the thing. If you're going to buy an, an investment like that, another thing that, you know, I've gone through in my life is you can buy all these really cool, expensive things, especially firearms. One, if you're not going to take the money to invest in the training and the safety necessary for it, don't. Correct. Um, I've had a lot of training in private courses and in the military. And my father was a Marine and he taught me to shoot from a young age and gun safety is ingrained into me. If you're not willing to pay the extra money to take a safety course or have somebody who actually knows what they're doing, train you how to shoot, then you shouldn't buy a firearm. Um, Cause you're probably not going to be safe and responsible with it. But 
if you're buying a firearm to carry and it's too big or it's too heavy and you're not going to carry it, then you're completely defeating the point of buying a firearm to carry it. Yes. So the $270 Ruger LC9 that you will actually put in your pocket every day and carry with you is going to benefit you a lot more than the $800 Sig Sauer that you're never going to wear because it's too heavy and you can't conceal it. Um, it. Don't ever start any hobby new expensive. Go entry level and take mm-hmm. it from there. Because mm-hmm. you're better off you're better off buying a three hundred dollar gun and buying five hundred dollars in ammo and practicing with it than you are buying an eight hundred dollar gun and not being able to afford to put rounds through it. Correct. Of course, right now there's no ammo anywhere. That's what I wanted for Christmas. No. no. You know what? What my son got me? He got me a new gun light with a green laser on it. I'm imagining that this was young Keith, but that can't be correct. No, this is my oldest son. <laughs> That's what I assumed. He, he bought me, Olight was having like a Christmas sale, and they knocked a bunch of their prices down. And I was showing this light to my wife, and my wife was like, oh, that's cool. And unbeknownst to me, she somehow took like that mental still photo and got that information through to my uh, son. So it came yesterday, a day late. Yeah, that's okay. And I opened up the package, and it's this beautiful gun light, beautiful Olight. It's gonna, it looks great on my 45. It's got this green laser. I'm testing it out, making sure it works. It was on my gun for about 37 seconds. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't been back on there since because it is apparently now a really expensive cat toy that my kids are running around the house with. Now, (laughs) no, it's not mounted on the gun. It's not. not. not (laughs) No, but my kids are walking around with a 1300 lumen green led it's yeah this thing's blasting out a green laser that'll just fry your eyes and they're running around the house with it (laughs) and it's it's adorable though it's glad my kids are able to play with something i got now get yourself to the point in life where you don't have a whole lot of i wants for christmas i have no yeah i don't know about you I actually didn't want anything this Christmas, and I didn't right. actually expect to get anything. I talked to my wife, and when I talk about the unicycle, that's not something she would have got me for Christmas. She wouldn't have gotten it for me anyway. She would have had me pick one to buy. And she just said, for she goes, for Christmas, all I want is two dozen roses. And I got her two dozen roses, and that was that. Did you count them? I'm assuming they were all mm. there. I wasn't going to stand in the middle of Costco and count them. Mm. And then Christmas Day came, and then uh, she started, like, throwing these wrapped packages at me. She bamboozled me. That's sweet. That's she got sweet. me a bunch of sh- all these shirts. I want In the point of talking about perspectives and friendship and philosophy and so forth, I wanted to hit that point of getting to the past the I want. When your kids, it makes sense. You have a lot of an imagination for the world, and you have a lot of wishes you know you, i remember being a child wishing all my damn stuffed animals would become real so i could dance around with them and play with them you're full of wishes when you're a kid by right. the time you're an adult you should understand that anything that you really want you should put the work in and you get a greater level of satisfaction in getting it when it's not magically granted such as bippity boppity boop y- y- yeah and like my 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 older kids understand this my younger kids don't when i try to explain how we get things to them i don't do it in money Mm -hmm. i do it in hours of my life it takes to get that so if i make a certain amount of money per hour is this something that i'm willing to give up eight or nine or 10 hours of my life to have. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of stuff when you look at it that way, you're willing to go without it. So let's circle back. It's it's not money. It's effort. It's time you're spending that you could be doing something else. Would I Mm -hmm. rather spend time with my kids or work extra hard so that I can have this thing for me? You you really have to look at your time usage accordingly. Mm -hmm. That's true. Money can be made back. Time, when it's gone, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. 
Yeah, it's so what I try to explain to my kids is my little ones. <laughs> it takes me a lot of time to get these things. Please be thankful for what you have. Don't think of it in terms of money. Right. Think of it in terms of time. Um, and uh, but my kids, once again, they got spoiled this year anyway. So who am I to talk? It's an interesting. If we could, okay, I'm going to vent a little bit about how much it bothers me that there is so much of a market for food delivery. It makes me insane that people will pay ten, fifteen, twenty dollars to have a ten dollar McDonald's meal delivered to you. It makes me crazy. Well, you know you can you can get raw ingredients and make food at home, right? Yeah, or, right. I, I don't think people know that this is a thing. You can also get your lazy tailpipe up, go That's to the question. nearest store, yeah. and then you say, and so, okay, I will, I will say, it is your money, you can do with it as you please, but if you go and you work at your job and it takes you one hour to earn the equivalency of one delivery fee from Grubhub or what have you. Right. And you could not be bothered to take the 15 minute drive to pick up your food. You are just throwing your time in the trash. You absolutely are. Yes. Yes. It's yes. I don't know how many. I don't. I don't get that. And anyone who, who, and, and, Anyone who listens to this are double-digit viewers. Hey, you, you know what? I I work with people. They're single, and mm -hmm. they live at home because they help take care of, like, their parent. Mm -hmm. And they're splitting, you know, the mortgage four ways with their mm -hmm. siblings. And they're single. And they yes. don't do anything on the weekends. Yes. You want to splurge and have somebody bring you a taco? You know, hey, if that's what brings you joy, that's what brings you joy. I get it. Yes. It's it's all a matter of perspective when it comes down to stuff like that. Me? No. Mm. No. Mm. I'm hard pressed to go through the drive through for an iced tea, which is because I don't drink soda. Mm -hmm. uh, I can only have iced tea and black coffee and water like I'm going under for surgery sometime in the next 60 years. Um, I'm hard pressed to pay two bucks for an iced tea. So mm -hmm. paying eighteen dollars for somebody to bring me taquitos that's outrageous mm -hmm. and if, i don't i don't get it yes if anyone out there has listened to this podcast to this point send us money questions because both of us are poor <laughs> oh so very poor <laughs> and we're not starving okay in all seriousness and, and, and in fact, I, I still continue to do my own investing. I still try to set up for retirement and so forth. The internet is full of successful people making millions of dollars out there uh, trying to give you advice. That's fine and dandy. Some of us need some advice on just how to get by. Right, yeah. I don't need to see the two minute and 30 second YouTube ad for Amazon drop shipping or whatever it is. There, it's always, it's always something, but it always costs you something, right? Mm -hmm. That's the thing. It's in, in none of these things that I've seen. It's like, get started in Amazon drop shipping. Okay. We started a podcast with two people and we're already in the hole. Okay. <laughs> this was two people doing something in their spare time. And we're already like a couple hundred bucks in the hole on equipment. Yep, yep, yep. So don't try to trick me with your magical money-making scheme. It's just not fair. The, the secret is budgeting and actually going to work and earning the money. Mm -hmm. That's that's the key. You have to get to work, earn the money. Hey, I'm going to tell you right now. If, if you're having trouble earning money, go to work. Oh, I don't yeah. I don't know how to say this. I, I I've had to I've had this run in with a few employees over the last couple of years. In order for you to earn money, you have to show up. Yes. I don't Yeah, you can take a sick day. We we all take sick days. That's that's perfectly fine. You're entitled to it. Yes. Um you have to go to work though and earn the money. <laughs> 
It's unpopular opinion again. You should consider whether or not your job actually justifies a mental health day. Um. Okay. So my job, my job, your job, is not that mentally stressful. Correct. Okay. It, it's not. Mine isn't. Mm-hmm. That's. I'm sure for many people it is, though, because once again, my life experience compared to the 20 year old working next to me who this is their first job, this might be very stressful for mm-hmm. them. Yes. For me, it's not. I'm just a monkey pushing a button. That's that's what it comes down to. So if my mental health work wise is fine. My mental health, everything else wise has always been broken. Uh-huh. And that's that's a completely separate issue from employment. <laughs> yes. OK. And I'm just going to contrast a little bit here. OK. Uh, an oncology nurse, for example, who slugs through 12 hours straight without a break, taking care of patients who are probably going to die. Right. Bunch of those back to back. There might be a day where you're like, I need a mental health day. That makes sense. 100%. Little anecdote. I don't think I brought this up in the podcast. I'm not sure if I told you about this before, but I I do, despite my salty nature at times, I love people. I love people. I try to give people good days. And one of my favorite things is actually thanking the young person handling the drive through at McDonald's. I love McDonald's far more than I ought to. And when the person's there, I'm like, hey, how's your day going? If, if there's a moment for it. Yeah. Generally speaking, they love that brief moment that someone treats them like a human. I, the- I, I worked that job. Yeah. If you right. actually, if you, if you're honestly like, hey, I really thank you. And you're like, wow, that, okay. That really feels good to get that from somebody. Right. Because that's a now, crap job. The routine with me is that that brightens people's day right. in a unique circumstance i go through i say hey how's your day going she's like oh it's good i'm just really tired and i'm like oh i'm sorry uh is it almost time to go home she, no i've got the rest of the day i'm like oh well you know you can do it yeah. have you been here a long time this was 2 45 in the afternoon she says well i've been here since 11 45 and i haven't gotten a break so four hours Okay. Three hours. Yeah. Well, I mean, but then again, for her, maybe that is a difficult task. Maybe. But, yeah, yeah. And here's the thing. That's why I try not to pass judgment like that. Yes. Uh, I, I judged a little. I'll admit it. I judged. That my, judging happened. My oldest son is in constant pain from cancer and chemo treatment, and it mm-hmm. left his body absolutely wrecked. And if you looked at him, you'd be like, well, there, that looks like a kid who could do yard work for eight hours a day and not complain. Mm-hmm. But no, he's he's in a lot of pain on a regular basis. Things like that are challenging for somebody like that. Mm-hmm. I get that. That's why he does other stuff for income. Um, Good. If you had me working a drive through window for three hours, I'd probably be OK. Um, I I. I would get so bored. It would... I would get extremely bored. But, you know, I, I used to sit in a cubicle and answer 911 calls for 12 hours at a time. Like, oh. I'm the drive through window is not going to be stressful to me. I'm just saying, I yeah, I, I could deal with that. Yeah. Okay. Now, in addition. Yes. In that regard. Yes. It kind of makes the greater point of... 2020, yes. unpopular opinion, uh-huh. was not that bad. Mm, I said it. Mm, are we looking at the last five-year run of how society has been going? I like to look at the whole picture of my perception of things, okay? So, we had. A, I'm not saying we didn't have a lot of crazy stuff this year. Because we obviously had a lot of crazy stuff. Yes. We had the coronavirus, uh-huh. which we're continuing to deal with. Yeah. Okay. The coronavirus uh-huh. is a real disease. It does actually kill people. Yeah. However, it okay. hasn't quite turned out to be polio 
or the bubonic plague or all of the other things that as humankind we have overcome before. It's a little perspective here. <laughs> okay. So your argument is, I mean, the Serbian genocide was a genocide, but it wasn't like the Holocaust. Straw man <laughs> argument. <laughs> Listen, it was... It was it was a rough year for a lot of people. It was. And no, a lot of people died that shouldn't have died. Correct. But but could things have been so much worse? Absolutely. Now, here's where here's where the perspective starts getting better. Okay. The election was lunacy too. Okay? That's yeah. a fact. It was uh -huh. just great. I mean, they always are. This one was also crazy. Orange man bad versus zombie. It was interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. I voted That's... for the fly, but he didn't make it. That was so... <laughs> that fly. He was our hero. Okay. <laughs> besides the complications of coronavirus, and besides the lunatic election, what else was really bad this year societally? Can I be honest with you? I wouldn't know because if something bad was happening, the news probably wasn't covering it. Right. right. right? So I just found out today that somebody detonated a bomb on Christmas Day. Yeah, that's RV. that was weird. That's I old, want, that's old yeah, hat news. But I just found is. that out today. They they actually they identified the person, but y'all can Google that, okay? That's that was a weird thing. That Guy gave a, he gave a warning, he blew stuff up. Now he's dead. Maybe we'll find out his motivation. Um, yeah, yeah, well, this is how I found out. My wife was like, hey, they identified the guy that set off that bomb in the RV on Christmas Day. And I went, they identified the what who set off the what on Christmas? What? What are you talking about? Because keep in mind, I do not watch cable. And for the best. Unless mm -hmm. I physically pull up Google News, I do not know these things. That's okay. That's so okay. now, as, as far as the year went, here, here's my unpopular opinion. Uh -huh. When the clock strikes midnight, it's not a reset. Thank you. That's exactly what I was getting to. Yes. <laughs> we don't just jump into a new year where we start fresh. We're okay. going to have the same problems. Unless I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure I'm not, but I'm, unless I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure that those who are of the Jewish faith have already clicked off a new year. And those who follow the Chinese calendar don't get their new year for a couple more months, which the message of the story is your calendar has almost no actual control over your life. No. Guess who's in charge of your life? Yeah. New year, new me. Hey, man, you don't got to wait till January 1st. Go to the gym and stop eating Twinkies. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I've been working on it. I don't want to wait till January 1st. It's too much pressure. Just just go walking. I don't. Yeah, that, no. Yeah, I don't. Because personally, okay, honestly, in the personal life of David Sutherland, the personal life of David Sutherland was far worse than everything going on in the society as a whole. I mean, I got into nursing school this year, and I got booted out for the dumbest possible compliance reason. We talked about this, right? Divorce happened. Right. Which, to be fair, that relationship needed to end, and I'm much happier without it, which makes the point that changes to your life aren't necessarily bad things. No. Uh, very acutely had to move, find an apartment very short notice, yeah, which is but wild in the Northwest. Been through that, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dealing with the, the new stuff at work with coronavirus and so forth. Anyone who works in healthcare, there's a great deal of extra measures that you have to deal with personally. The life of David Sutherland turned upside down, but I still made the best of it. This year actually has been good for me because I'm moving on to awesome things. I think this year has been good for, I, I think the year has been good and bad for a lot of people, just as all different years are. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't think 2020 was a bad year. I think 2020 was just another year in the books. Because yeah, if you do look at the grand scheme of things, 
2020 was not the roughest speed bump that we've ever hit. No. Um, it was if you got sick. And if you, if you got sick or you know a loved one who passed away because of this, I really am sorry because mm-hmm. a lot of this should not have happened. Um, Correct. But yeah, in the grand scheme of things, it, it wasn't, wasn't as bad as it could have been. It did... If you look back at 2020, it started out really rough, especially with, you know, all the police brutality and the protesting and the Black Lives Matter stuff. And listen, I I don't have an opinion on that. That is not. I don't. It's it's not. It's my fight for the rest of the humans. Yeah, it's it's my fight for the rest of humans that are mistreated. But the truth is, I don't I think it's we've had institutional misjustice that has gone on for far too long. And yeah, I think people are finally just sick of it. And then it rotated into people occupying cities and changing the message entirely. Yeah, it it got bad, but, but I'm just going to jump in. Is Miss justice, the winner of the miss social justice contest, social justice contest. Yeah. I, it's uh, institutional institutional abuses let's put it that way um which suck yeah <laughs> yeah they really suck and then it got once again turned around by society to occupy places and totally twist the message and cause damage and havoc and things mm-hmm. like that and then and then and then we all had to stay six feet apart from each other it was, it was, if anything, it was a weird freaking year. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but the weird yes. year doesn't stop at the ring of midnight on December 31st. The weird year is just going to continue that we just add a number to it. Correct. I am here to say, because by default, this becomes the new year episode following the Christmas episode. I'm here to say, once again, emphatically, as strongly as I can, that you, whomever has listened to this point in the podcast, you are in charge of your own life. No one else is in charge. Yes, there are external factors that can affect the outcomes of your life, but your perception of your life and the overall success of it is up to you. You cannot control the actions of others. You can only choose your responses to those actions. Correct. And that being said as well, uh, 2020 was another year where a lot of things in my life got burnt down and had to get started over. This is a natural occurrence in nature. Yes. Yeah. It happens to happens to forests all the time. Right. You're right. If you have not yet had extreme hardship tragedy, struggles, whatever, count your lucky stars, knock on wood, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I am not wishing this on anyone, but when tough things happen, get through it and understand that absolutely nothing under God's yellow sun gets stronger without struggle. We will all be stronger as a result of 2020, so long as we all learned our lessons and work together and all of those wonderful good things. But no matter what, Sean is in charge of Sean. Dave is in charge of Dave. Yes. And you can freaking do it. Like, yeah. What do you want to do? Stop blaming other people. Right. Not that hard. I, God, I just don't get it. Well, say no, no, no. It's. You, there's other people do have an influence on your life, but if you've been complaining about your job for three years and you haven't taken the steps to get a new job, then that's it's not on it's not on them. That's on you. That's a you problem. It's, that's a you problem. That's just what it is. Like my me being overweight. That's a me problem. That's nobody else's problem. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna blame the fast food industrial complex that keeps bringing the McRib back. No, I'm I love gonna, that no disgusting. I'm gonna, <laughs> you know, that that's a me problem. It's not right. my wife's problem. It's not my kid's problem. It's, it's, it's a me problem. And we do run into stuff. Listen, when you, when you're, when you're going check to check and you need to buy a battery, 
would you live our life? That's hard. Mm, Things be, like yes. that happen, and that's yes. understandable, and you will hit those speed bumps and those hiccups. But yeah, for the most part, we're in control of ourselves. So, so I don't. I, that's why when you go to bed at night, you don't blame other people. You just rewind everything you've ever done wrong in your head until you fall asleep and let the anxiety build inside you like a time bomb. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> yeah. That's how... That's a bad habit. That's how bombers happen, actually. That's, that's... Oh, too soon? Mm. Okay, so on that lovely note, so yes, the point is... Y'all listening, make 2021 awesome. You can totally do it. Uh, yeah, do it. So, Sean. You know what, what you need to do? You know, okay, you're going to yes. cue me. What? <laughs> do your what you need to do, and then I'll cue you. I was going to say, you know what you guys out there should do? You should get into model trains. Oh. You're stuck at home. Actually, there's a model train company that has seen a surge in the sales since the COVID lockdown. Yes. I'm here to say that model trains are pretty boring but i enjoy them <laughs> i mean don't get me wrong you're just watching a train go in a circle but i enjoy them you get to stay at home you get to watch a train go in a circle do something you could do from home start a hobby go in defense of model trains in please defense of model trains. in defense of model trains there is some catharsis in making a little world and watching it do its little world things. Oh, you think I care about the train? I don't care about the train. I care about the tiny, tiny, tiny town I get to build around the train that Correct. lets my creativity flow. Correct. There you have it. In yeah. defense of yeah. the mall train world. Okay. So, yes. Sean, go ahead and plug your social media. I'll get mine out and we will send people off to the wonderful world. I am. I felt guilty once on Twitter. Nobody's tweeted me yet. That, <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Realistically, again, this is a year's project. We're doing this because we have a hell of a lot of fun with it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, in, in fairness, it's like, what, Zap was like, so what do, how long are you guys going to do this? I was like, I don't know. So we die. <laughs> Correct. It's just Correct. it's a really good excuse to chat with each other for an hour. It is. And, and if other people want to listen to blithering titled white idiots talk, then <laughs> good I on them. Acknowledge em. my privilege. Okay. <laughs> I have checked my privilege. So right yes. There on my wall. <laughs> Please, if you if just tweet our dear friend Sean at what was it again? You don't have to tweet me. I felt guilty once on Twitter. And I also have not received an email yet other than a new sign-in at latterdayliger at gmail.com. So, yes, that's L-A-T-T-E-R-D-A-Y-L-I-G-E-R, -E -E the animal that um, Napoleon Dynamite wouldn't shut up about, latterdayliger at gmail.com. It should also, it also should be noted that you still have comments enabled for your YouTube videos. And, and I can't wait how long it's going to take for you to figure out that you want to disable those pretty quick. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Because <laughs> so. I, I, I ended up disabling my comments about two years in. <laughs> Two-year mark. If we have 48,000 views on a like, video. Wow, that, was, that was very negative, sir. And comments disabled. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Cahill, have yourself an amazing evening. Everyone listening, have yourself amazing times. Uh, again, this has been How to Be Friends with Dave and Sean. Good night, good my night. good friend Sean. Good night, Dave. Bye.